Andy, you go outside and see that everything's locked up. Stay where you are and keep your trap shut. So, Whitey, I thought you had ten more years to serve. Yes. But I was so anxious to get square with you that I busted out. I could have knocked you off when I first come in, but I had to face the judge when he handed me my rap, and I want you to do the same. You're crazy. Maybe stir crazy. If I am, I got you to blame for it. I've been laying up there in a pen while the Black Raven's been doing pretty good for himself. We were partners when the dough was rolling in, but when the law cracks down, you don't know me from a yellow dog. All of a sudden, you got too smart to take orders. When I saw what was coming, I protected myself. Why should I get in the jam? Because you were a fool. That's your story. The way it looks from where I stand. You double-crossed me so you could grab the works. You could be wrong about that. Yeah. And I could be right. You weren't satisfied with a 50% cut. So now I'm going to give you a 100% pay. Matter, didn't he like the service? He's suffering from rapid delusions aggravated by a moronic mentality. Is that bad? Might prove fatal. I hope it ain't catching. <laughs> Let up on me, Raven. I won't bother you no more. I'm quite sure you won't bother me anymore. What are you gonna do with me? You've still got another ten years to serve. That'll keep you busy for a while. Don't turn me in. I'll promise to leave the country and never come back. I'd be a fool to take a chance on trusting you when I don't have to. I'm told you can slip a hot guy across the Canadian border. I don't think I know you. I'm Mike Bardoni. You're the Black Raven. I have that mug put my car away. Andy? Oh, I'd like to dry up sometime tonight. Maybe you'd like to see today's paper. I don't think so. 
I'm in a hurry to get across the border. It's liable to rain all night. You may as well be comfortable. Well, maybe I'd better. Mike Bordone and the Big Shot. In solid with the state organization. Taking the underground to Canada. What's the answer? My racket's paying off big, so Tim Winfield decides to take over and make me an office boy. And I don't play that way, he tosses me to the coppers. I'll come back when the heat falls and settle with him. Tim Winfield, huh? He's a bad man to fool with. Others have learned the hard way. All right, so it won't be easy. You think I got where I did by being a cream puff? How about some grub? I didn't take time to stop and eat. I'll see what I can do for you. somehow in the morning. I hope so, before Father catches up with us. Well, we'd better get out of here before the storm gets any worse. Scaring up something to eat. 
Good evening. Did you want a room? Uh, yes, the highway bridge was washed out. So I heard. Let me take these. Oh, uh, never mind. I'll carry these. All right. This way, please. I thought I'd spend my vacation up there. Excuse me. Why don't you watch what you're doing? Sorry, pal. I hope I didn't break your bottle of cologne. I'll show you up your room. Outside one's putting away. Another one? No, this keeps up, I'll never get dry. Will it only have the key to your car? Oh, yes, of course. You come with me? <sighs> Nasty weather for traveling. I consider that another statement. The bridge is washed out, you know. I know. Will you register, please? Uh, yes, thanks. See, we like his blessing. That's why we're planning on being married across the border. I can well understand that. Uh -huh. I may as well take you all up at the same time. Fine. Oh, would you pardon me for just a moment? If you're ready, I'll have Andy take you on your way. Oh, there's no hurry. I'll stick around for a while. I uh, like it here. Suit yourself. I'm sorry. This way, please. find this room comfortable, Miss Winfield. It's very nice, thank you. I can give you a room across the hall, Mr. Bentley. Well, that'll be fine, thank you. I'll be with you in just a minute. I'm terribly afraid. Now, everything is going to be all right, darling. We'll cross the border and be married in spite of Mr. Winfield and all his henchmen. Follow me up here, Tim. I didn't follow you. 
What you do means nothing to me. I wouldn't be surprised if you changed your mind about that. I don't like to be kicked around. You ought to draw your hat, Mike. There's no one the organization can't get along without. I'm glad to hear that, because they may have to get along without you. Well, seldom I have such a distinguished guest as Mr. Winfield. You know me. I've had business with you, indirectly. It seems I've gotten wet. Yeah, my car went into the ditch. I had to walk half a mile or so. Oh, that's too bad. Put on this robe of mine, why don't you, while your coat dries. Thanks. That may help me from catching cold. What business did you have with me, indirectly? I don't think you'll be interested in talking about that now. Excuse me while I get a jacket for myself. Escaped. You've got to search the house from top to bottom. You've got to find him. Who searched for who? He may be dangerous. He is very dangerous. That's why you must find him right away. And that don't make me anxious to find him. Where's Bentley? I've been trying to catch up with him. I don't give information about my guests. You know who I am. You better cooperate with me if you hope to stay in business. I warned you to stay away from my daughter. And you brought her here. That's right. But as soon as we reach Canada, we're going to be married. You'll never get to Canada. Look here, Mr. Winfield. Lee and I love each other. Not even you can stop us. I could kill you for that. A lot of people have felt that same way about me. But I'm still very much alive. I hope for Lee's sake that you and I might someday be reconciled. But I won't take that, not even from her father. You'll take more than that. I haven't even started on you. Lee isn't quite 21. And I'm going to have you prosecuted for kidnapping. I'll make sure you get the limit. Andy, don't stand around there. Do what I told you. Yes, sir. Connect me with the headquarters of the state police. That's what I said, the state police. What's going to happen? Why is Father calling the police? He'd call out the Marines if he could to keep us from getting married. Operator! Operator, are you asleep? This phone's dead. It was all right a minute ago. You probably noticed there's a bad storm going on. Anything could happen. Once more, I forbid you to marry this fellow, and I expect to be obeyed. You've no right to allow a stubborn prejudice to interfere with my happiness. I'll be the judge of that. We'll go to your room, and you'll stay there till I can take you home. You were a fool to think you could put anything over on me. We'll see. black right now.
dislike Alan because he had the courage to oppose you in politics. I dislike him. That's enough. Why should you care who I marry? You've never shown much affection for me, and you can hardly expect me to show much love for a father I, I can't even respect. What do you mean by that? Don't you suppose I can understand the dirty politics that's kept you in power? Do you think I'm such a fool as not to know where you get your money? And I can also thank Bentley for turning you against your own father. He had nothing to do with it. I knew about you before I met him. Well, you better start to forget him, because you'll not see him anymore. into my room. A man or a woman? A man, I suppose. Why would a woman want to break into my room? Yeah, I guess you're right. Well, this is no joking matter. My life may be in danger. All right, all right. I'll go look under the bed for you. Thank you. Everything's all right here. Someone tried to open that door. That door's locked. Must have rattled in the wind. I don't think so. It sounded exactly as if someone was trying to pick the lock. It's just your imagination. You look very familiar to me. Where have I seen you before? I'm sure we've never met before. I suppose I remind you of someone else. I never forget a face. Something about you is impressed in my memory. Maybe it's the decorations. I got it. You're Horace Weatherby, the missing bank cashier. I've seen your picture in the papers. I don't know what you're talking about. How much did you get away with? I didn't get away with anything. I'm on my vacation, and I have a right to go where I like and do what I please. How much did you get away with? I could find out for myself by opening that satchel. No, wait a minute. I'll tell you. Fifty thousand dollars. That's far from being peanuts. You better turn that money over to me. No, I won't. This is my last and only chance to live, and I won't give it up. All my life, I've been nothing but an animated batting machine. I wasn't supposed to have any feelings or emotions. They just wound me up once a week with that little salary check that was supposed to make me tick until the next Saturday. And traveling back and forth to work in that crowded subway with its smell of sweat and garlic, all I could think of was fresh air and the out of doors. I never planned to embezzle any money, but the chance just came one day, and I took it. That money goes back where it belongs. I can't give it back now that I've gone this far. I've no desire to see you sent to prison. If I take that money back, you're free to do what you like. It's that or stand trial for embezzlement.
Take your foot out of that clothesline and you won't be attacked anymore. Hmm. Oh, well, it could have been a fellow that tried to kill you. How was I to know? Leave up the back stairs. I'm going to look around here for a while and I'll meet you on the second floor. None of my business. But it might be a good idea if you were to keep out of sight for a while. I'm not running away. Everybody's so excited. Your father met with an accident. Where is he? It's best for you to stay here. Nobody upstairs. One of our guests seems to be missing. Yeah. How about that fellow that's trying to register? John Smith. Well, there's your murderer. Might be.
Go and see if any of the cars are missing. Make sure that none leave. Come on in and shut the door. Where's that money? Is that the $64 question? Quit stalling. That little shrimp had 50 grand in his satchel, and Winfield took it away from him. And then what? Well, somebody's got that money now, and it could be you. So you killed Winfield. We won't worry about who killed Winfield. Where's that dough? Thank you for telling me about it. Well, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Maybe that young fella got himself a wedding present the hard way. Anything's possible, but I don't believe that's the answer. Well, where's that money now? It isn't a pigeon that could fly home by itself. Somebody break their neck. Then I've seen a shed. Plenty of shadows down there. Yeah, but they stay put. They don't move around. In your imagination, you can see the Statue of Liberty do a conga. Ah, hello, Sheriff. What brings you out on a night like this? Phone operator said someone from here was trying to call the state police. And the phone went dead. That's right, but he won't need them now. No, why not? Because he's like the phone, dead. Yeah, died kind of sudden, didn't he? I think he was murdered. Murdered? When you act like that's nothing to get excited about? Where's the body? You'll have to go upstairs. All right, lead the way. Don't any of you leave this room. imaginary convict out of a hat, do you? Oh, I thought you could do better than that. Hmm. Let's go downstairs. I want to talk to Andy before I do any more investigating. find the body, Andy? Uh-huh. Are you sure he was dead when you found him? Well, he didn't say whether he was or not. And I didn't stop to ask no questions. Hey, you ain't thinking maybe I done it. Never mind what I'm thinking. You answer my question. Well, I didn't have no reason to kill nobody. But he did. To keep his from being arrested for kidnapping. They had a fight right here in this here room. And I heard him say he could kill the other fellow. So oh, you had a fight with the court, huh? My father objected to Alan and I being married. That was all. Let him answer my question. 
And I'm warning you, whatever you say can be used against you. Where were you when the murder was committed? Right here in this room. Who was with you? No one. I was alone. Well, that's not much of an alibi. And the corpse was trying to call the state police to have you arrested for kidnapping. Well, you can't beat that for a motive. I guess we can call this crime solved without much trouble. You're more stupid than usual, Sheriff. That boy isn't a murderer. Maybe you're mixed up in this, too. I've had my suspicion about your business here at the tavern for a long while. Yes, I noticed that. It's been very amusing. Yeah, well, maybe it won't be so funny one of these days. You come with me while I finish looking around upstairs. You better stay here, darling. No, I'm going with you. Don't stand there and argue. Come on. It's too bad you weren't born without a tongue instead of without a brain. Well, I didn't want him to think I'd done it. All right, he doesn't think you've done it, so get out. Yes. You're not planning on having John Law get me out of your way, are you? You're not in my way. But I'm not going to have that boy take a rap for a murder he didn't commit. Oh, the Ravens turned soft all of a sudden. He just wants to get the kid out of the jam. He's not a bit interested in the 50 grand. Believe it or not, that's the way it is. I don't believe it. That goes around here someplace and nobody elbows me out of the way. I really didn't push it. Well, maybe it was an accident. What do you want in hell? You have the keys to my car. Will you give them to me, please? No. Mr. Bradford says no one's to leave here. But the sheriff has the murderer. There's no longer any need for the rest of us to remain. Mr. Bradford says no one leaves, and no one leaves till he tells me different. But I'm afraid to stay here. I know there's going to be more violence, and my nerves can't stand that sort of thing. It ain't no use arguing. If I can stand it, you can. Come on, get out. <laughs> You'd better confess. It'll save me the trouble of looking for the murder weapon. And it'll be easier on you. I have nothing to confess. He couldn't do a thing like that, Sheriff. You must believe me. The lady, you've got to cooperate with the law or keep quiet. If you would allow anyone to cooperate, you might not make such a fool of yourself. When I want your advice, I'll ask for it. You're going to have my advice whether you want it or not. You're trying to pin a murder on the wrong man. You said that sure he's innocent. Maybe you're guilty. Maybe I am. You don't know that. Are you confessing to the murder? Certainly not. I'm merely trying to point out that you don't know who's guilty. You're just trying to confuse me, that's all. He's guilty, and I'll have no trouble to convict him. Come on, get in there. You know better than I am. No, you stand. Where did Winfield go when he took that money away from you? I don't know what you're talking about. Quit stalling. I heard the whole thing. Maybe Winfield hid that money someplace. Where'd he go? I don't know. Hey, did you kill Winfield? Don't say a thing like that again. Somebody might think you meant it. Now, why don't you confess and take life instead of the chair? I tell you, I have nothing to confess. Oh, now, you're just being foolish, that's all. You can't beat this case. Tim Winfield's got a lot of important friends, and they'll make it their business to see that you're convicted. You've run out of that! You've done that on purpose. I'm terribly sorry. I hope you didn't hurt yourself. 
Sorry he made that break. It makes it look worse for him. It was his only chance. That crooked political bunch would be only too glad to railroad him. To get him out of the way. Yes, that's true enough. We've got to find the murderer. You wait in your room till I see what can be done. Thunder. I was standing by the window and I saw the gun flash. I, I'm afraid Alan's been hurt. Now don't you be frightened. He had plenty of time to get away. He might have tried to come back on my account. Don't worry about something that probably never happened. Downstairs and go on about his business. Hmm? I really don't know. Maybe the Raven is cooking up something with him to put the skids under me. The mugs bother me. Maybe one of you knows where that money is. Anyway, I'm not giving you a chance to scram with that dough while my back's turned. But I assure you. Never mind about that. I'll see that you stay put. Come on, start moving. Get down on the stairs. I don't know 
like it down there. Neither do I. Who asked you what you like? Get down there. I guess that'll hold you. Where's that copper? Outside catching cold, I hope. Maybe the gal here knows something. She could have been slipped the satchel. What's he talking about? He has an idea that someone has a satchel full of money. Now, you're not kidding anyone. There's 50 grand around here someplace. There's also a murder to be cleared up. If we don't stop talking about that, there's apt to be another one. Now you're quite satisfied, no money's here, perhaps you'll untie us. It's around here someplace, and you're going to stay right where you are until I find it. I've got the place to myself now, I can give it a real going over. Afraid I'd overlooked this possibility.
Find out who that is. Come out with your hands up or I'll shoot. So you thought you could escape the gallows, eh? I'll make sure you don't try that again. Come on, get upstairs. Where'd that shot come from? Did you fire that shot? I did not. Alan! Alan, are you hurt? No, darling. I wouldn't have been caught if it hadn't been for those two nitwits. Andy, you're going about your work. Mr. Bradford, it wasn't my fault. I'd locked down the basement. I couldn't... Get out of here. with you. Have you lost your mind again? <laughs> Dead man! Dead man. That bullet was meant for me. Well, there's another murder for you. Go ahead and solve it. Maybe you can pull something out of a hat. Ooh. I give up. The sheriff can handle this to suit himself. It stopped raining. I can leave now. Will you give me the keys to my car? You can have them as far as I'm concerned. I'll be happy to see the last of this place. You'd better see the sheriff before you leave. Yes, I will. You heard him. Give me my keys. Now look here, Sheriff, I, maybe you didn't commit the second murder, but I've sure got you for the first. But, Sheriff, you're making a terrible mistake. Yeah, we'll see about that. Just a minute, Mr. Weatherby. 
You killed Tim Winfield. No, that's not true. I didn't kill anyone. You're going to run away and let young Bentley suffer for your crime. If that's another murder, I'm going to screw it. Move over, Sheriff. Fire those shots. What goes on here? Here's the man who killed Winfield, Sheriff. Him? Why, well, I wouldn't suspect him of having the nerve to kill a rabbit. Now, just a minute, Sheriff. Let me explain. Shut up. What makes you think he killed Winfield? The evidence was clear enough. Although it did take a little intelligence to unravel it. Also, he has the money. The other murderer is there. He was an escaped convict. Whitey Cole. It was after me. Why did you kill Winfield? I didn't mean to kill him. But when he took the money away from me, it was just as if he'd torn my heart out. You see, I'd gambled everything on that last chance to live, and without the money, it was useless. And as I sat there thinking about that, I got desperate. I picked up the footstool and followed him into a room where he'd gone to hide the money. I hit him as hard as I could. I wanted to hurt him, but I didn't think it'd kill him. And then I threw the satchel out the window, planning on picking it up when I could. <coughs> Mr. Bradford, you're hurt. I guess Whitey has paid off in full. Thanks, Mr. Bradford. I hope you'll both very happy. 